They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It is your boy, the Squirrel. Today I am back. Hey, finally back. Uh, the uh, stomach bug ravaged my house for the past week. Luckily, I had some uh, some videos already recorded, so I was able to keep some stuff flowing. But uh, there's a few days there where nothing was coming on any channel, and uh, nothing I could do about that. But uh, feeling better tonight. It's time to get some stuff recorded so that I can start putting some more content out. And tonight, I'm looking at Her Majesty the Queen Explains the Imperial State Crown. Oh, a little over three minutes here, but a little explanation from Her Majesty about uh, about the crown and uh, what the, I would assume what the different uh, pieces of the crown mean. So, um, yeah, let's take a look at it. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to support the channel, you can uh, hit my Amazon store link in the description below and start your shopping experience from there. That helps the channel out a little bit. And... Uh, that's, that's all. See, that was quick and easy and painless. Let's get into this. Her Majesty the Queen explains the Imperial State Crown. Let's do it. The Imperial State Crown. Anyone who's been to the Jewel House at the Tower of London will know there are several crowns to be seen there, but only two of them are actually used. The St. Edward's Crown and this one known as the Imperial State Crown. It's normally kept at the tower, but I have it here at Buckingham Palace because I wore it this morning at the state opening of Parliament. The crown as you see it now was made for Queen Victoria in 1838, but many of the individual stones have a much longer history. The oldest is probably this sapphire, which is said to have been worn as a ring by Edward the Confessor nearly a thousand years ago. What? Wow. The pearls are said to have belonged to the first Queen Elizabeth. The story goes that this strangely shaped ruby was given to the Black Prince after a battle in Spain in 1367. Oh, just a couple of years ago. Look at all the little tiny I mean, those diamonds. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's <laughs> crazy. I always like to think of it being worn by Henry V during the Battle of Agincourt. It's difficult to be absolutely certain about some of the other stones because after the execution of Charles I, Cromwell had the crown jewels broken up and sold. The Black Prince's ruby, for instance, was sold for four pounds. But it was returned to the crown after the restoration of Charles II. Most of the bigger stones have had adventures. According to tradition, this huge sapphire at the back was carried off in his pocket by James II as he went into exile in 1688. That is huge. It was over 130 years before it was restored to the crown. This great diamond is a more recent addition. The first star of Africa is even bigger and is in the scepter. Look at the size of Both the diamond. Both of them are parts of an immense diamond which was found quite by chance by the manager of a mine in South Africa in 1905. Apparently, he just dug it out of the rock face with his walking stick. This is a model which shows you what it looked like. The whole Cullinan diamond, as it came to be known, was given to my great-grandfather, King Edward VII, on his birthday. The Dutch jeweler, who had to split it before it could be polished, was so overcome by the responsibility that he fainted as he struck the blow. But he did it perfectly. There are two smaller pieces which my grandmother always referred to as the chips. This crown is worn at openings of Parliament and after a coronation. The other one, the St. Edward's crown, is only worn once, at the moment of crowning. And there it is. And we just saw that recently, right? I mean, we just saw the crowning of the new king. Uh, it's kind of interesting, though, to see uh, Her Majesty explain that that's crazy, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of expect, I expected kind of like, you know, you know, the crown was, you know, invent, you know, was created in this year. And, you know, there's a couple of these things and these, I thought it was like maybe the symbols of the 
you know, the shapes or something. I wasn't expecting these massive stones. This massive stone would belong to this guy. And this one, some guy just happened to stumble upon with his cane. Like, what? What? Are you kidding me? I mean, like, I'll take any of the little tiny stones that's out of there. Thanks. Pay off my house. What the heck? I mean, now seeing how many, how much of that is actual, like, gemstone? Things got to weigh a ton. That's got to hurt your head, right? I mean, I mean, I joked around about, you know, how awkward that crown looked on Camilla, but I imagine how, how much that hurt her head. The thing must have weighed a ton, too. Ah, oh, crazy. Well, it's kind of interesting. I mean, no, I just, with the coronation recently and all the stuff that's been going on, I thought it'd be kind of neat to, you know, to, to, to check out a video like this and learn a little bit about the crown. And, you know, we got to learn a little bit about the stagecoaches right before the coronation. So I thought this would be something, you know, a little different to check out. So I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. It was nice to learn about the crown and learn about these massive jewels. And uh, it's always good to listen to the queen talk for a little while. I hope you folks enjoyed this and I uh, hope you enjoyed the reaction. And I will uh, hopefully catch you guys very soon. Uh, if you're uh, up for another dose of the squirrel today, check out the music channel. There's something coming out or I already did. I don't know. Something's going on. Who knows? There's always something going on, right? Maybe. Hope you guys are good. I'm feeling better. It's good to see you. Be good. Scroll out.